This week, I'm back in the valleys of South Wales to ride at a new trail centre. Today, I'm here in the Quimcarn Forest. Quimcarn is home to a number of cross-country and downhill trails. And today, I'm going to be riding the Twitch Trail. This is a classic Welsh trail known for its absolutely savage climbs, its super fast descents, some spectacular views, great scenery. This scenery is awesome. And a few other features thrown in for good measure. I can't wait to get on my bike. Arriving here at the trail centre, there's plenty of parking. There's also toilets, a changing area, and a decent bike shop. I was also impressed with the parking prices. Three pound for all day is awesome. For the ride, I'm on my Cube Stereo today. This should make short work of the downhill sections. However, it may be a bit of a challenge on the way up, so I'm interested to see how that's gonna go. Before I hit the trail, I took on some extra riding energy. Then it was time to get going. I've heard some great things about the trails here in Quincan Forest, and I'm keen to see what they have in store. I've recently been riding a lot of bike parks and jumps, so I'm excited to be back riding trails again. So this trail starts in a valley, so I'm assuming there's going to be one hell of a climb coming. And I wasn't wrong. Looking at the map, the Twitch Trail is a 13.4 km long red graded trail. Depending on your fitness, the guide says that it should take between an hour and a half to two and a half hours. Speaking of fitness, this place is not for the faint hearted, as some of the names would suggest. The trail map says it's 440 meters of ascent. Looking at the ride profile, almost all of the climbing comes in the first half of the trail, which is a good 45 minutes. So yeah, you need a solid level of fitness to be comfortable on this trail. Lovely technical climbs. Wales is all about the technical climbs. Every trail center I've ever been to, the climbs aren't boring. I think the reason these climbs are so interesting is because they're left pretty rugged, which means that they're full of natural rocks and roots that result in some technical sections in places. But this all makes for some interesting climbing. About 20 minutes into the trail is where some of the steeper and more interesting climbing started. I actually found some of these sections pretty tricky. This is partly due to my lack of fitness and also because I'm riding my enduro bike today. With its slack front end and the fact that I hadn't bothered to lock out the suspension, the prolonged climbs were tough work, but I wasn't going to give up. So with all of this rocky uphill, it's become pretty apparent to me that my enduro bike, probably not the best tool for the job. When it comes to the downhill, I'll definitely be in my element, but trying to ride uphill over lots of these tricky rocks on a really slack enduro bike, not good. It's safe to say I won't be winning any Strava times today. There's no doubt about it, this climb is a pretty big effort, but this is the final push to the top. Welcome to another episode of how not to climb on an enduro bike. Oh, go on, go on, yes, oh, this is savage. So one thing that all this climbing has really, really made evident, I should not have eaten that scotch egg in the car park. Oh, my stomach. <laughs> stomach aside, at the top, I had a choice of two downhill sections, Airstream 1 and 2. I decided to go for Airstream 2. This is the more interesting and harder graded trail of the two. It has a few little jumps, some rollers, and a few fast corners. Oh, nice. It's lovely to be going downhill. According to the trail guide, the riding on Twitch varies from open and flowing to tight and technical. A couple of fun little jumps there. In places, the trail hugs some very steep woodside and slopes great. that demand concentration. Elsewhere, it sweeps along the open ground, giving you the chance to take in dramatic views of the Bristol Channel and the surrounding hills. Some pretty rocky berms, but we're flowing nicely. Despite all the recent wet weather, these corners were really dry and dusty. Having not ridden this trail before, I didn't know what was coming next. It also became quickly apparent that my brakes aren't in the best condition, so I needed to keep my wits about me. Woo! Carrying on down, one thing that this trail does well is pick up speed fast. 
With most of the climbing done, you can really enjoy the amazing terrain and the awesomely long descents. After a couple of fast sections, you have a bit of a traverse through the forest. This gives you time to shake some of the pump out of your arms. But this forest jaunt wasn't without its interesting features. Oh, optional skinny, here we go. Yes, awesome. Who doesn't like a skinny feature? It's awesome to see features like this on trails. Challenges like simple skinnies are great for adding a bit of spice to boring sections. Oh, here we go, bit of downhill. This next section is epic. Nice. Now this is why I have my Enduro bike. It's a super quick piece of single track where you really have to be on the board. You first start your run snaking back and forth through the trees. The side to side transitions are quick on this section and things only speed up the further down you get. Coming out of the trees, it looks like the trail's recently been redone. Things get a bit rocky out here and some of the corners are a bit loose and chunky. But if you have time to take your eyes off the trail, the views are spectacular. Oh, look at that view. I could take my eyes off the trail. Woo. But I don't recommend you stare for too long. In my opinion, this is one of the best sections of the whole trail. It's super fast, interesting, and flows really nicely. That was awesome. And the fun didn't stop there. At this point, you take a short break from the downhill sections to traverse along the hillside. I can see what the trail guide meant about the steep drop on one side, but it also gives you some more spectacular views. But again, you don't have long to appreciate the views before your eyes are firmly fixed on the trail for one of the flowiest sections. This section is a dream. Fast, smooth, with plenty of sweeping corners from left to right. What's not to like? This is a long downhill stage and it does get pretty fast. Considering your speed and the snake in trail, I completely forgot that there's a huge drop to one side. Probably for the best. It's always a good omen when there's a caution sign before the trail. This section here is the penultimate section of trail, and by far the longest one of them all. Spending most of my time riding in Devon, I've not ridden a trail section this long in a long time, and I definitely feel out of practice. This top part continues the flowing theme of the previous couple of trails. The ground felt stable, the lumps and bumps were in all the right places, and you can pump your way along the trail spectacularly. In no time at all, you feel like you're absolutely flying. This is my type of riding, and I really feel like I was in my element in this top part of the section. But as I made it further down, I did have one criticism. Although this is an amazingly fast and flowy stage, it was a bit samey. Considering the length of the trail, it could have perhaps had a few more features or made better use of the terrain. Considering how interesting some of the uphill sections were, with all the rocks and roots, this one felt like it needed a bit of seasoning just to spice it up. Although, despite it being relatively featureless, it's still highly enjoyable. After all, I'm bombing it down a hillside on my bike, what's not to enjoy? That was a really long section, cool. My eyes are streaming, that was great. By the time I reached the last section, I was getting some serious arm and calf pump, but I was having such a good time, I couldn't bring myself to pull over and rest. <laughs> yeah. At this point in the trail, my brakes were absolutely cooked and screaming like a banshee. Sorry everyone, I think it's definitely time to get them sorted. On this section, with the vegetation being so dense around the trail, it was impossible to see what was around each corner. This last section is also pretty fast and flows nicely just like the others. Between the lack of visibility and the fact that my brakes aren't working, this made for a pretty interesting and potentially fatal section. After I squeaked my way into the last couple of corners, I felt well and truly done. Well, that was absolutely epic. After I'd finished the ride, I met up with some friends for some more fun of a different kind. So I'll leave you with this. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.